Kristen Hawkins. Welcome to this new episode of the Explicitly Pro-Life Podcast. I am actually in Naples, Florida, using the facilities at Community Pregnancy Clinics, which is one of the premier pregnancy health organizations in the country. I'm here for a few weeks doing recording some episodes. So we thought it was a good idea to have Scott Beyer, uh, who is the new CEO Yes. as of last June of Community Pregnancy Clinics to come on. Um, you all re- might remember last year I interviewed your predecessor, Gary Ingold, right. about the, the CPCI model right. um, and the success that you all have had across Florida. But I wanted you to come on to kind of give us an update. Yeah. Scott, you... I, you know, you kind of came to the pregnancy center world from army, seminary, and then Catholic education. Yeah. So I think it's good for folks who are listening and watching um, to kind of hear your background, how you got to this, because they kind of look at you and like, yeah, who why? Are you? You're like, you're super political. We were right. like talking, we got to get into some politics here, sure, hopefully. Sure. Um, so it, you don't strike me as a typical pregnancy center director. So I think it would be really great for people to hear your story before I start big, you know, asking you lots of questions about Absolutely. what's happening at CPCI, what you see on the future for a post row America for the pregnancy health movement. Yeah, that's great. Um, and thank you, Kristen. You're such a prolific uh, figure in the pro-life movement. This is quite an honor. So thank you for that. But uh, in a nutshell, my background, you know, I started um, after a kind of neo-pagan existence in college, right? Neo-pagan uh, existence. Yeah, okay. neo-pagan. But then the army kind of woke me up a little bit okay. to the realities of, um, of, of, I'll say, evil in the world. Mm. And so I spent my last five months in a place called Bosnia. Um, never had to serve in a war. I'm grateful for that. But I saw the effects of war after it. And, you know, one of the connections I make to the pro-life movement is, you know, when you see people who are in a war-torn world, mm-hmm. um, you know, the look in their eyes is trauma, it's empty, it's devastation. Mm-hmm. Similar to the look in the eyes that I see in front of Planned Parenthood when they go in, but even more so when they come out, when these women mm-hmm. come out of Planned Parenthood, it's the same look that I saw in Bosnia. Um, and then wow. the seminary, you know, kind of got me woken up to, OK, what am I going to do with my life and with my mission? And how does God uh, you know, want me to serve him? Mm-hmm. And I thought that was going to be federal level f- law enforcement for a while. Mm-hmm. And then until a priest said, uh, you know, have you ever you want to be a Walker, Texas Ranger? <laughs> there was it was a moment. I, I love Chuck Norris, by the way. <laughs> I could come up with a lot of Chuck Norris jokes. But um, anyway, so in the uh, seminary, it was, a, it was a priest who said, you know, have you ever thought about being a priest? Mm-hmm. And I said, yeah, I've thought about it. And mm-hmm. he's like, everybody's thought about it. What have you done about it? Mm-hmm. So I spent the next three or four years discerning. Mm-hmm. And I realized now that I had a uh, vocation to the seminary. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a wife and five kids. They're all beautiful. <laughs> so my vocation was a little different, but mm-hmm. God used that time. Uh, and mm-hmm. then another Catholic priest said to me, uh, hey, we can use some good men in our schools if you're not going to be a priest. Mm-hmm. And so I started for 23 years. I was in Catholic wow. education, teacher, dean of students, and in the last five years as principal of an independent Catholic school here locally in Naples. Um, and then from there, I said a prayer, right? And the mm-hmm. prayer was, Lord, if you have something else for me. Let me know because mm-hmm. I'm ready to kind of expand or do something else. I felt a call. Mm-hmm. And uh, lo and behold, CPCI was on the horizon. Gary, mm-hmm. uh, Deacon Gary Ingold, uh, was transitioning to our foundation, which mm-hmm. he's still at now. And um, my wife said, you've got to take a look at this. And mm-hmm. then about three months later, I was signing a piece of paper that said I was going to be the CEO of CPCI, of Community it. Pregnancy Clinics. I love it. Um, and I think it's great you have you all of this experience that you're bringing into, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, this this world of pregnancy help yes. organizations that, yeah. you know, you, you have a lot of experience that I think a lot of folks who rise up as directors just simply don't have. Well, I was going to say the mission of our Catholic school, the, the main part of it was to um, educate the heart. Mm. CPCI's mission talks about revealing the heart's voice, mm. right? So working with families, right. and, yeah. I, and I really think the end of abortion is not going to be political. That's going to help, right? Mm-hmm. It's going to be a heart issue, right? That mm-hmm. longest journey from the head to mm-hmm. the heart, that 12 inches. And um, so it's a hard issue, and families are, as John Paul II said, the future of humanity passes through the family. So I mm. see it as a continuation of my work as an educator. Yeah, I just, um, 
I normally don't ask people about their background. Okay. I have, well, like, thank you for a bunch that. of yeah. questions, but yeah. I thought it was really interesting you. your kind of journey here sure. because I don't think when people, you know, you, we were in a meeting with pregnancy center directors, pregnancy mm-hmm. help organizations, and there was a lot of older ladies, and yeah. then there was you. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of stand out. I stand out. I'm six five, so that also helps. But um, no, it is. I think uh, again with my army background mm-hmm. with intelligence and knowing your enemy and kind of knowing what are we up against here, mm. um, and taking it to where the women are rather yeah. than waiting for them to come to us I think yeah. is a huge part of what I want to do well that oh that's a great transition okay because you're taking it to where they are yeah so one thing that Gary and I spoke about last year that I really wanted uh, hopefully that we can expand upon this conversation is where do you think we need to be as a movement as we mm. prepare for a post row America yeah. I mean I I've been I probably said it at least a dozen times on this podcast about the challenge we have of people not knowing who we are, you know, through Mm -hmm. um, our abortion free cities program, 80% of the people we knock on the doors of in communities that neighborhoods are literally surrounding an abortion facility in a pregnancy center. Don't know the pregnancy center exists. So, I mean, we have a lot, a lot of work to do. So where do you see kind of the future of, of our movement of the pregnancy help organization movement, yeah. where, where do we need to go? Like, what are your yeah. words of wisdom you want to share with us? <laughs> well, again, I'm not an expert yet. I'm just kind of new into the world. But, but I like that. That's actually what I like because you're coming <laughs> in from the outside and yeah. you're seeing it from a different perspective. Yeah. So I think you might have a different perspective than others of us might have. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I would say the word that jumps out is technology, okay. right? So the old model, and I was always, you know, aware of the uh, pro-life movement and I would spend time in front of Planned Parenthood. And let me tell you, they're like the warriors that are out in front of those Planned mm-hmm. Parenthoods. We um, thank you. <laughs> we can't do it without you. There was a gentleman the other day I saw had a windbreaker on. It was like this bright orange windbreaker. And I was yeah. like, so you were probably a prayer warrior from a Planned Parenthood. He was like, how did you know? I was like, <laughs> you're a windbreaker. Yeah. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah that's right. I wear yeah. it all the time. No, there's I mean, something, they're amazing. They're amazing people, and we, we, and we need them. Mm-hmm. But that's, um, I would say, in, in, as we go to the future, that's the old model, mm-hmm. right? Planned Parenthood knows their market. Yeah. And they're going to their market before they ever show up at a Planned Parenthood. Okay. Right. So, you know, on technology yeah. side, yeah. Uh, where are women going when they're looking uh, or debating whether they should have an abortion? They're going to their phones. Okay. Right. So topics that I'm learning all about and we have consultants that we're investing in. How do we get our website yep. to be organic search marketing uh, okay. proof? Right. So organic means that someone searches for a keyword. And then they find you that yeah. way, right? Mm-hmm. As opposed to paid advertising. So 70% of all clicks right now on the internet are organic search, mm-hmm. right? So if you're not in that market, if you're not changing your your keywords on your websites, if you're not keeping your your um, your posts current, right? Mm-hmm. There's like 10 things that you can do on your websites to make sure that you're found before Planned Parenthood. Mm-hmm. So this is a world that- Make sure your site isn't loading too long. Well- There was that, a big fight at Students for Life about yeah. my, my beautiful map. If you go to Students for Life's website, we have yeah. a beautiful new map. Yeah. But there's, a, there's like, with over 1,300 pins, and there was like this whole fight <laughs> yeah. about there's too many pins, and the load time will take too long yep. Yep. for the search engine optimist, the SEO experts. I was like, I don't care, I want the pins. <laughs> it was like a whole like, yeah. two hour discussion. If people, but it's have to, if people have to scroll down, yeah, you've lost right. them. So the Above bounce the rate, the bounce rate is important, and we can see with <sighs> Google Google Analytics will tell you if you have a high bounce rate. Can you explain to everybody listening who isn't me? What a bounce rate Okay, is. a bounce rate is when a person comes to your website, how long do they spend there, right? Yeah. So if it's under five seconds, right, which, yeah. um, you know, some websites you're going to see 70%, 80% of the people that come to their site are under five seconds. They're yeah. bouncing. That means you're doing something wrong, yeah. right? They came to you for the wrong reason or there was an expectation they were looking for and they didn't find That's it. That's like when people are like, oh, my gosh, this video has got millions of views. How long did they watch the video? Exactly. The majority of them did not watch the video for longer yeah. than five to right. ten seconds. Right. And the, the beauty of technology that we can use to our advantage, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of countering big tech a little bit, who's not very friendly to the pro-life cause, as you know. So uh, there's a, something called a, pr- a free paid advertising campaign that Google offers. Yes, that's right. right. The problem is the algorithms are now skewed against us, right? Mm-hmm. So we know we're not getting the traffic from those free ads. Yeah. So you have paid ads, and those are worth something. That's the other 30%. Mm-hmm. So an investment for the future for pregnancy clinics is 
put some money towards yeah towards paid ads but get your website top notch right so again we're going trying to get That's there before Planned problem, Parenthood gets there because the websites huge. are not they're, they're not great no yeah they're not there are a lot of really outdated sites limited information and you think about search engine optimization yeah you know, you've got to have blog posts and relevant information yeah. because that that keeps it current. Current keeps relevant. And it's not so much for your readers that are going to hear great things. It's so that Google says, yes. "Hey, that's a website we can kind of put higher on the list." Mm -hmm. Right. So this technology world is again not normal for a lot of people who have been in the movement a long time. But we've got to go there because mm -hmm. Planned Parenthood is there, mm -hmm. right? And then the other way we're going to where the women are is obviously with our university model, right? Mm -hmm. 15 to 24-year-old 24, 24 women, mm -hmm. they're on college campuses. They are the market. And as you know, 8 out of 10 Planned Parenthoods are within walking distance of a college mm -hmm. university. So those two worlds of technology and being on college campuses like our our beautiful yep. campus in Gainesville at the University of Florida. Uh, you know, I think you've spoken to Pam Stenzel recently. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's where there are 55,000 students, right? 71% of them They're will stay there. in Florida. So we're all about impacting the culture of Florida, uh -huh. right? So uh, we have five clinics right now and two mobile clinics. Um, and we're about seven or eight different uh, colleges and, and universities that we're uh, allowed to have a presence on. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's what I loved about when I talked with Gary last year, and I thought it was so trans transformational, is that you actually are allowed, you, you said, allowed to have a presence on. I mean, <laughs> most pregnancy center, pregnancy help organizations that we speak to aren't don't have a good relationship yep. with the college. Yep. They can work through a students for life group to do advertising and marketing, yeah. but they don't have like you at was it Florida Gulf Coast? You actually have yeah. like an office. Yes, uh, once a week, and we've just were asked to do two days a week. Um, and I have a story to tell you because uh, you know it's going to be uh, it's a huge story, but okay. it's a small story, but it's a huge. All right, give me the topic. story. All right. Don't tease so anymore. the Socialist Democratic group um, connected to the university says on one of their blog posts, "We're going to get rid of uh, community pregnancy clinics. We don't want them because they're not." Not for the women, mm. right? Like Planned Parenthood is or something, right? And so uh, what was beautiful about that is I read the comment section, and one of their own participants in the Socialist Democrat student group says, why are we doing this? They're just helping women, as far as I know. And so that's the answer, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I went and spoke to the medical director and just said, hey, is everything okay? And he said, you know, it's okay. Can you do another day? <laughs> Because they have a need, uh, yeah. not just this local university, STD but all, all STIs. And that's um, so our nurse has a, or our, our DMS sonographer has an office next to the nurse on campus. And just we're there to support them because mm -hmm. they have a huge need. There's, you know, kids showing up all the time. Like, I didn't know there were 30 STIs. Um, how many can I have, you know? And so we're providing education mm -hmm. in a way that, um, universities are having difficulty doing and government just simply chooses not to mm. right. you mentioned the in terms of you know where going where they're at you say you've got two mobile yeah. clinics i want yeah. to talk about that okay. because yeah. i get asked a lot from folks uh supporters who are considering mm -hmm. supporting buying a van to yeah. give to a local pregnancy center I, I get contacted by pregnancy center board members mm -hmm. uh, directors who are considering do we need to go mobile um and, and I think it's kind of been billed as like, this is the next wave mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. you know, Pregnancy Help Organizations 2.0. Yeah. But I don't really, see, like, I don't see it that way. Okay. I've seen a lot of not, I've seen a lot of very empty vans, let's put it that way, mm -hmm. of p folks getting vans, doing the right, what would be perceived as the right marketing for the vans. Yeah. And, and then not having people come in, mm -hmm. women not coming into the vans. Right. Um, are you seeing that? How do you use, I mean, you have two, so you obviously must like the model. Mm -hmm. How are you using, is it just kind of part of like the, the feeder? Yeah. So there's a couple of different aspects. I would say the value, right. And then there's also, there's a cost, right. Mm -hmm. The cost value analysis. So the value is, you know, if you save one life, yeah. you know, Jewish prov Jewish proverb, you save one life, you save the world. Right. Yep. So there's value. Um, That's why I tell myself when things don't. Yeah. Happen. Right. I and, know we were just doing something and it was like, Oh, that was a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> I know we saved this many lives. Yeah. So okay, right? It's great. It's worth it. What but with the yeah. cost value analysis numbers. Right. So yeah. I would say to any potential, uh, you know, system of clinics out there, you know, you've got your office, your brick and mortars. Mm -hmm. All right, to su support those, right? Your mobile clinic can support reaching women in the local areas, maybe in the rural rural communities that you're just not going to reach. 
But I think more importantly is like we strategically use them in front of Planned Parenthood. Mm. Right. So we park right in front so that sidewalk counselor can say, hey, free ultrasound here before you go in there. Why don't you get a free ultrasound? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, That's value there. Right. Then the other part of that is how many women drive by, see the van and keep on driving by. Mm -hmm. Right. Because something stroked, uh, you know, stoked their conscience a little bit. So we don't know the full value, Mm -hmm. um, but I would say it's a it's an important part of a model. But I wouldn't base, you know, you're going to get a lot of numbers that way. You're going to get a lot of baby mm-hmm. saved that way. Uh, but one is enough, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and then I would say using it around the colleges and universities. Another quick story. Last uh, fall, I decided I wanted to drive the mobile van in the homecoming parade at the University of Florida. I felt like that was my way to, to really <laughs> jump in. <laughs> oh, it's great. I have pictures. Honking the horn, waving to people. It was great, right? So we're in the... Parade, homecoming mm-hmm. parade. It's a massive amount of people in the local community. Well, as I watch afterwards, the video that's produced by the student union mm-hmm. to produce the video to show the homecoming, mm-hmm. homecoming parade, we were cut out of it. The lady who's announcing, the student says, oh, and this is community pregnancy clinics. And she actually says something true. She says, they're here to provide choices. And then it cuts off. Mm-hmm. And um, we're left out of that segment. And it goes to the next float behind us. I'm like, how does this, you see, but this is kind of like they mm-hmm. know that that van represents something that they don't agree with, mm-hmm. that they know we're doing something yep. that they know needs to hap, you know, mm-hmm. happen, help mm-hmm. women save babies. So uh, it's amazing, though, to, th- to think about what we're up against you yeah. know, in terms of those college campuses. And that's really where our future is going to be is to expand to other colleges and campuses around the state. Do, thinking about a post-row world, is it what is that your best advice to pre- other pregnancy help organization leaders mm, directors mm. to think about tech you talked about technology, technology. the websites um, is it really expanding to campuses making sure you're on campuses I think so because that's where again the market Planned Parenthood again eight out of ten mm-hmm. Planned Parenthoods are within walking distance of a college university know your enemy they know their market so let's get there let's mm-hmm. get there before they do or as they do and with medically accurate information yeah. with real uh you know counseling that's mm-hmm. there to help women so i think that's the future i, I love I how you cited a stat that students for life determined yes you know, thank you for that I you guys are doing it. great it's research it's just become part of the You're thing we research. actually have to update that because we were thinking about because we're like oh my gosh it's yeah. probably time and now they've moved i mean a lot of yeah. clinics have closed they've opened up new clinics so i was yes. actually just I was like oh it's time to it, update oh, they do that research right, right. Uh, but i just love it. it was like become something natural like yes yeah. th- that's yeah. common knowledge now in right the, in the pro-life movement so yeah. um what do you think about so post row something that we've kind of just broke at students for life a few weeks ago was this um so we're so our abortion free cities campaign we door knock in communities surrounding abortion facilities and pregnancy centers and we have like a door hanger that we put on doors and it compares what the pregnancy help organization offers versus Mm -hmm. the abortion facility which i mean it's always not great and we always you know play up how the pregnancy center is offering these free resources Mm -hmm. versus the very costly uh the very costly um commitment they have to make if they go into planned parenthood for an abortion whatever sti testing sd testing treatment um but what we found in Austin was that Whole Women's Health, they're the organization that sued, uh, you know, the Texas law. There's a Whole Women's Health, the Hellerstadt mm-hmm. decision. Mm-hmm. They're a chain of abortion, just like they are abortion facilities. Like that's like their goal. They're not even, they don't care about any, like that's what they do. In Austin, they're offering all their services for free now. Mm. Mm. This is going to be a challenge. Yeah. And this is a reminder, too. You talk about the abortion industry, right? Mm-hmm. Most people are thinking Planned Parenthood makes their money off the women coming in off the street. That's a pittance to what they're getting from what I call the unholy alliance of mm. government, university, uh, big pharma, and big tech, right? Mm-hmm. That's the, the quadrivium, the four-part uh, unholy alliance. I didn't so, know that was a word, quadrivium. Uh, that's Latin. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> it's the quadrivium. That's so, a Catholic educator uh, coming out, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but so that is where they're getting their money. So they can do things like that. And I'm sure there's a donor behind that. Oh, and yeah. Say, hey, let's, let's get this. You know, how long is that going to last for? Maybe mm-hmm. it's going to last for a few weeks or months or something. Um, because at the end of the day, as much as chemical abortion, I know you're very yeah. well versed on, is the future. Mm-hmm. Because they're getting almost as much money for very low cost, right? Mm-hmm. No ultrasound, no visit with a doctor, no REMS protocols. 
they have the the cost of the pill, which is very low. Mm-hmm. Um, but the unfortunate thing is they're still going to do surgical abortions because that's meeting the need of the industry in mm. the fetal parts. You know, yeah, and chemical abortions, 15% of them end up in a surgical abortion right. anyway. Right, exactly. One in five women will have complications through hemorrhaging, through partial birth, or infection. And so these numbers are staggering, and they're only going to grow as the chemical abortion industry uh, grow, grows through the death by mail, mm-hmm. as, as we've heard uh, being used. And uh, this idea how, that- how do you think they're making their money? So, like, is it – I mean, beyond the Warren Buffett's and the donations. Yeah. I For mean, example, I'll give you one example locally, okay. right? Because right across from us is a Planned Parenthood. Yeah, it's pretty eerie. Coming. I hate being next yeah, to Yeah, it's dark. Facilities. It's dark, right? It's, it's, it's you know, it's the modern-day Holocaust. So these mm-hmm. are the, the death chambers of uh, Nazi Germany, who, by the way, I spoke to a German once in, uh, in Germany, and I asked her, did you know, you know, when the trains came in, like she lived in a – um, you know, near uh, Dachau, and, she, and I'm like, did you know when the trains came in and they were empty and they left? And she's like, we all knew. Everybody knew. But the famous question she, and I'll never forget it. This here, is when you were serving in the Army. When I was serving in the Army in Germany, and she said the famous words I'll never forget. She said, but what could we do with a tear in her eye? So that's what we have with Planned Parenthood, who, by the way, is open two days a week. No clients come in or out. So why are they open? Because they have to, because they get a government grant for probably 2 to $3 million, that requires them to stay open. They're not doing abortions. All those are referred up to Fort Myers. So that's what they did in New Mega Clinic. Yeah, the Fort Myers one. Um, so Naples is not doing abortions, but they have to keep the offices open. Even though no one comes in. Yeah. There's a couple cars there, and we kind of keep an eye on things. And sometimes people come in and out, but mm-hmm. they're not doing their – they're not making money there. But they have to stay open because of the government grants. Wow. Isn't that amazing? So that's what we're up against. We're up against an industry that is well-funded, yeah. government-sanctioned, yep. government-supported. And, um, you know, and when you say, well, how are we going to battle that? Where, where's mm-hmm. the hope? Well, the hope is one baby, one mother at a time, one mm-hmm. family at a time. As John Paul II said, future of humanity passes through the family. So let's let's yeah. get out there. And you know? not be like that woman in Dachau that you met. Yeah, exactly. Or, I um, mean, I love the movie Hacksaw Ridge. I'm a Mel yep. Gibson fan, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, Desmond Doss, famous yep. line at the mm-hmm. end. Where he's kind of going back up the cliff, saving lives, mm-hmm. and um, you know, bringing the you know, both sides, enemy and, and friendly, mm-hmm. to safety, and he uh, goes back up the last time and says, "Lord, just give me one more. Mm-hmm. Just give me one more." You know, so mm-hmm. that's what we're about as pregnancy clinics: the mercy model, being mm-hmm. there for women. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the end of the day, the political world, um, I don't have all that much hope in. But that's how I want to end this. Okay, is on the politics. All right. Because okay. I'm here. I've been here in Florida for a few months. I love Florida. I could spend like all year here. Come on down. Be bored. I know. Yeah, it's great. I, my, I took my son to Ave Maria last year. And I yeah. spoke there, and he was like, "I like this." I have I'm a freshman like, there now. He loves it. He yeah. Loves so it, I was yeah. like, "Oh yes, come yeah. on. You want to go to school, Ave Maria? Mama wants a townhouse <laughs> uh, in Florida." So I was like, "We could rent it. It'd be so cheap." Okay. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Look into Ave Maria. But anyway. Um, it's interesting when you come to Florida, and I was at this event. Governor DeSantis was there. He was getting this big award, mm-hmm. and the award is like this pro. It's John uh, uh, Carno O'Connor Award, mm-hmm. and it's for this pro life award. And I was like, and Governor DeSantis has promised to sign the most sweeping pro life legislation ever introduced in Florida. Florida has horrific, and everyone loves Florida. Like it's a red state, mask free. Mm-hmm. You know, COVID doesn't exist here. You're free. People love it. Like it's the saving <laughs> right. hope for all Republicans. Like everyone's like, yeah, Florida. But you guys suck when it comes to your abortion. Yeah. I mean, you guys have 24 week abortions. Yeah. Uh, one of our former team members, Missy Stone, who now leads Reprotection. I have the honor of mentoring her. Wonderful. Lady. I've had her on, I think, twice now. Mm-hmm. They have found proof like written proof that there are abortion facilities operating here in florida who are lying on their like a trans that saying that they have transfer agreements with the hospitals they don't have they should be immediately health shut department down. should close them down health yeah. department won't shut them down i mean like what is wrong and, and then this bill that was introduced in tallahassee 15 the, weeks 15 a 15 mm-hmm. week abortion ban which has some of the biggest exceptions like i've ever seen more than the standard rape incest life of the mother exception like yeah. bigger exceptions than that there was a heart Heartbeat bill, bill on the table, mm-hmm. and I, we were like, "Oh, that 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 that, get, that got killed by pro life advocates, right. by the way." And yeah. I won't name any names, but I know their names. Mm. Um, like, what is going on with your state? Yeah, well, this goes back Sorry. to I, I'm, I'm a huge I'm Governor gonna... DeSantis fan, by the I know, way. I, I like 
Governor DeSantis. But I think uh, there's got to be some delivery on some promises, right? Um, so we know there's HB5 that's uh, in the House bill right mm-hmm. now. There's SB146 that's being put forth. But those are 15-week bans. So I think it's not either or. Mm-hmm. It's both and, yes. right? So we keep our eye on the ball, yeah. which to me is at conception is when yeah. all abortion should be illegal. But we take what we can get yep. at this level and we bring them together because we can't stop at 15 weeks. If that, I know. That's why I was like, why did passed. you kill? Yeah. You could have simultaneously advanced. I hate this concept of we only passed one pro-life bill here, a session. Yeah. Which one do you yeah. want? Right. Like, why do we like at the little kids table and be like, oh, yes, sir. Just yes. one. Pro-. Like, why couldn't we advance both of them? I think you and call it access politics, right? Access based. Yeah. Access based. Oh, yeah. I was lecturing the pregnancy center. Director. I like yeah. it was a real nature. Pol- I was like, sorry, all politicians are lazy. <laughs> right. Like, right. That's why we can't put our hope totally in yes, politics. Right. right. It's going to go yeah. back to the culture. It's going to go back to this idea that um, we have to change hearts. Mm-hmm. Right. It's a hard issue. Right. That's what abortion really mm-hmm. comes down to in what I call the the Balam, uh, um, you know, uh, strategy to kind of yeah. undercut a culture. And you've created this industry now that is, uh, it's child sacrifice, right? Mm-hmm. So um, politics has its place, and we're going to keep our hopes going mm-hmm. that the, you know, Texas-style heartbeat bill, um, yep. is that 155 days now it's been in play? And yeah. how many babies have been I saved? I just did an episode on that. Mm-hmm. How wonderful that is. So I'm still hopeful, and mm-hmm. I think Governor DeSantis and his team, um, I think in the end they're going to do the right thing. But we need it soon because if Roe's overturned and we're stuck in this late, this place for yeah. two years, you're going to have a lot of disheartened. Doesn't Florida have like the third highest abortion rate in the country? We it's are number high. three in the country. After New York and California. After New York and California. Um, and if you look at, you know, per capita, how many people are moving to Florida, that's only going to grow. Yeah, trust me. Demographics, yeah. yeah. People need to stay in their blue states and stop messing up. <laughs> let's not up. be purple. Yeah, right? let's not be purple. <laughs> that literally, it was funny because when I heard Governor Santos talk, he was talking about this massive growth and yeah. economic growth. And it was actually funny because I've never really heard a governor kind of gently tell people stop moving to my state <laughs> like he he wasn't like really plugging like yeah. the value of moving to the state usually like you know christy Noam's like move to south dakota yeah, no, no, no. like you saw the traffic this morning probably so, yes i got stuck yeah, in it so yeah, yeah you know it's it's crazy okay. but it is, it is fantastic but yeah i feel like we've got to do i mean i, I guess you all as a 501c3 mm-hmm. But you guys could get get up to Tallahassee and be like, this is what we're seeing. Yeah, yeah. Our goal is not to be political, is to support that effort, Mm -hmm. right? At the same time, we're going to be there for the women day in and day out. But, uh, you know, in fact, we're going to be meeting with Governor DeSantis' aide soon. And just to have those discussions and kind of ask those questions. Because I think we need to hold our politicians accountable. Yep. Uh, because we hired them for a reason, and we're a government of the people. Yeah. And I, and I think <laughs> I think it's, it's important for us as pro-lifers to understand that is you know even when we have these great politicians who will you know you know stand yeah. up for pro-life beliefs in the debate or proudly say they're pro-life, nothing happens in politics without force. And so it's like, you got to be like behind Mm -hmm. them and you got to be reminding them and like, you have to do this, you have to do this. And like, you have to be that nagging person, (laughs) right? Like um, squeaky wheel getting the grease. Absolutely. um, Even if they're our friends. Yeah, the vocal minority is just that. It's a vocal minority. I mean, I I think the one good thing, and I want to make sure people know this, you know, for years it was said that nothing could happen in Florida because of your Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. And I think Governor DeSantis has changed that with yep. some of his Moving in the right appointees direction. to mm-hmm. Supreme Court. So now laws can be passed that then will be upheld. Right. So there, there is absolutely credit yeah. where credit's due on that front. Exactly. But, okay, come on, man. Like, if you want to yeah. be president of the United States, <laughs> there's, like, more you can do. Yes. And, the, and, yeah. and I think, you know, the pro-life generation demands, you know, pr- protection at conception. And we're going to be very clear. That's the goal. About that is our goal. And mm-hmm. while we can, you know, testify and support a 15 week ban, um, you know, congratulations, you've banned three to 5% of all abortions. Right. Most are happening before 15 weeks. So there's obviously a lot more that has to Absolutely. be Absolutely. But there's so, reason to hope, right? Yeah, and then, there actually um, is. And, yeah. and God, God works. And we're here to, you know, to support women uh, doing God's work. That's awesome. Well, thank you for giving us an update, Scott, on the excellent work of community pregnancy clinics. How can people get uh, more information about what you're doing? And check out your awesome website. Yes, the website is going. So we have two websites, one that's client-focused and one that's donor-focused, or Mm -hmm. we call them investors. So um, our client-focused website is communitypregnancyclinics.com, communitypregnancyclinics.com, and our donor site, investor site, is supportcpci.com. 
That's awesome. Well, definitely check out CPCI. I know in the past I've been a donor to CPCI. You always sell me when I attend your events or yeah. become a monthly donor. Um, so I, I, I'm really, really excited to see what you all pull mm. off here in Florida, especially with your student uh, university model. And we're honored to partner with you. And thank you for letting me crash your office. It's an honor. No, thank uh, you. You're always welcome. Weeks. You're always welcome. Kristen. All right. yeah. Well, make sure you check out CPCI, Community Pregnancy Clinics in Florida, and make sure you pay attention to what's happening here because they are truly Truly one of the most innovative pregnancy center organizations I've had the honor to meet and work with over the years. And that's uh, one of, I think, the great perks of what I get to do at Students for Life is I get to meet so many uh, amazing leaders on the ground. And then they just happen to be in a wonderful part of the country as well. So that doesn't hurt. <laughs> uh, make sure you subscribe and share this episode, especially with those who you know are in leadership at a pregnancy center uh, organization. Um, and share the episode last February with uh, the former president president Gary and now president of the foundation Gary Ingold exactly. I think those are two very valuable episodes especially for those who are involved or considering getting involved in the pregnancy center movement in a now and in a post-row America bye guys hey.